Hello internet, it is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today we're going to be talking about Taylor Swift, The Errors Tour. So as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons, so let's get to it. Pros. So, Taylor Swift. If you don't know who she is, I don't even know what to tell you, honestly. It feels like everyone on the planet knows who Taylor Swift is at this point. She's been around for quite a long time. You know, she started very humble country music days, and then she transitioned into pop. And now we're here. I mean, she's had so many hits, so many, like, songs that have been played to literal death. And I know this because I've heard these songs way too much. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. There's Shake It Off. There's Bad Blood. There's uh, Look What You Made Me Do. Those are like the main three that pop into my head. And there's like a bunch of others. Just a lot of love song related ones. It's just like, like we're never getting back together, whatever it was. There's too many. Some of these songs have hit a billion plus views on YouTube. Over a billion views yeah so taylor swift she is not a small artist <laughs> okay she is anything but that she has legions and legions of fans of true diehards swifties as they call themselves so obviously with this like this is a dream for them so yeah taylor swift you know her insane popularity, her legion of diehard fans, that's a big old pro. The biggest pro ever, really. So, you know, she herself is a brand. So, brand name recognition is an automatic pro here. So, that's pro number one. Pro number two is the Eras Tour that she's been doing recently. So... From what I've gathered about this era store, because I really didn't know much about it. I mean, I knew, I mean, I've heard of it, but I never really looked into it. But, um, the whole Eras tour, the whole gist of it is that it's going over her whole, like, journey through all her eras, you know, her phases. <laughs> so basically all her major, like, songs and whatnot. And, um, yeah, it's basically just her story in song form. And it's been an insane hit, like a stupidly big, uh, hit. Uh, I think it's, I don't know how much it's made. I think it's made like several billion dollars. I think, let me check just to make sure, uh, commercial performance. Uh, one point four billion. I see one point four billion. I'm seeing two billion as of this month. Is that these are big numbers? And uh, I mean, sold like the first day of apparently in pre sales, it, the tour sold two point four million tickets, the most sold by it, an artist in a single day. So that's pretty wild. <laughs> um. And I know I heard about all the Ticketmaster stuff, like how a lot of garbage went on there with like scalping and like selling tickets at ridiculous prices. It is a mess. <laughs> but um, the tour has been an insane success. And this is the ultra cheap way to watch the tour. You don't have to risk paying thousands of dollars to see the tour live. You can Watch it in a movie theater for either $13.13 or $19.89, both of which are references to Taylor Swift. So you can spend like less than about $20 or less, or you want to spend thousands of dollars watching her live. So I imagine for a lot of people, they would choose the ultra cheap option, <laughs> which makes sense. So... Yeah, so the fact that this is, you know, basically a, a theatrical version of her tour, 
her very, very, very successful tour, labeling that as a pro, definitely. So a very successful tour that this whole movie's based on, or I guess documentary, whatever you want to call it, is based on. So that's a pro. Another pro competition. Oh, just saying that word makes me laugh. A competition. What? What's out there? <laughs> like the box office has been pretty dry, if you haven't noticed, for quite a while. Like after like Barbenheimer, man, the box office took a real dip, like a, a fast dip, too. We haven't had like a real runaway hit in a long time since barbenheimer you know barbie and oppenheimer the one-two punch you know that was we haven't we haven't had anything that even that's even come close to that i mean we've got some movies that have done all right like in mutant mayhem and a meg 2 and an equalizer 3 and a nun 2 and paw patrol mighty movie and saw x those are done fine but i don't want to call any of them smash hits I feel like that's a false title for any of them. So, yeah, it's been a while since we've had a real, real blockbuster in the marketplace. But that changes this weekend <laughs> with this. So, yeah. And the thing is, this movie, when it was announced like two months ago, and like after that, it actually scared off a lot of movies that were supposed to come out when this was supposed to come out. Well, So... I know several movies, like, they kind of, like, some, like, sidestepped, some just straight up yeeted out of the spot entirely. I know Dumb Money did, I know Exorcist Believer did, that was supposed to come out this weekend, but it got moved up to last weekend to avoid Taylor Swift. And I think it was Ordinary Angels that, that was supposed to come out this weekend, but then it got moved all the way to February. So yeah, Taylor Swift, she made an impact. Okay, and no movie wanted to be near her because they knew that this was going to be a big, big, big deal. So, yeah, minimal competition right now. I mean, the rest of October isn't exactly super strong. I mean, I know there's Killers of the Flower Moon, but I don't see that being a big hit. I, I just don't. Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know how that's going to do. That's a real wild card for me. But, yeah, besides those, like, the rest of October is pretty dry. There won't be, like, any big movies coming out, like, really big movies until, like, the Marvels. But that's, like, way in November, so... And by that time, the Eras Tour will be... This whole thing will be over. Because this movie has an interesting release where it's only playing on weekends, pretty much. It's, like, this weekend... The next weekend, then the weekend after that, and then Halloween, and then the weekend after that. Like, the first weekend of November. And then that's it. It's gone. So it's basically going to be in theaters for one month only. So, yeah. But, yeah, competition, it, it's pretty minor. So that's definitely a pro for this movie. Another pro are the pre-sale numbers. Man, like, when this thing was announced... Like, tickets sold so fast, it's unbelievable. I remember, like, after a few hours, they were like, oh, it sold 13 million in pre-sales. And I'm like, wow, this is only after a few hours? Like, what? <laughs> like, there are movies that don't even make that much, like, after, like, weeks and weeks and weeks. But this thing sold that much in, like, a few hours. Or maybe it was like one hour, I don't remember. But it's first day, after its first day, its pre-sale numbers reached 37 million. Very few movies are able to do that. And the those movies are the big-time movies. The ultra blockbusters, you know. Your Marvel movies, your Star Wars movies, those movies have like... Those are like the only movies that really sell that many tickets in, with pre-sales. But this matched that. And it exceeded pretty much all of them, more or less. Except maybe Endgame. But, you know, Endgame was Endgame. And then uh, ticket sales reached like 65 million in pre-sales. Like several weeks back, I heard about that. And then like recently, they were like, oh, this is already so like 100 million in pre-sales like globally. And I'm like, damn, this, this is getting crazy. <laughs> so... Yeah, pre-sale numbers, pro. Pro. 
it's already a success. It was already a success long before it even played in a theater. <laughs> so, yeah. Labeling that as a pro. Uh, I guess another pro I can mention is the fact that um, these rare movies, like, I guess these concert movies, they're kind of a rare breed. There's not an overwhelming amount of them out there. Well, it's not an overwhelming amount of, like, big ones. But when they come out, you know, they can make money. I mean, the biggest one here is Justin Bieber, Never Say Never. Just like when Justin Bieber was, like, the biggest thing, like, over a decade ago. This is, like, you know, like the height of his popularity. This opened with, like, $29 million, made, like, $73 million domestic, $99 million, uh, worldwide, which... Is very small compared to the, I mean, again, like the Eras tour, that has already made a hundred million in pre-sales. It already surpassed this movie, but you know, for this movie, it did all right. It did quite all right for itself. So there's that. There's oh, this is a big one. The Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, um, uh, 3D like Best of Both Worlds, uh, concert tour. Which is pretty much the same as what this is, more or less. This was huge because, like, this was like the mid to like the early two thousands, like that decade was was dominated by Disney Channel, especially the later half of that decade. They were on top of the fucking world. <laughs> they just, it was wild. Like they had so many hits, big hits. It was, like, the biggest being, like, High School Musical and Hannah Montana. And so, obviously, this came out right place, right time. And it's open with, like, over 30 million and less than 700 theaters, which is crazy. Like, it doesn't sound like a lot, but tr believe me, it is at a 45k per theater average. This thing was uh, a big deal back then and made, like, 70 million worldwide. And then I'm trying to get some other ones. I guess I can mention the One Direction. This is us. It's like a similar movie. Like this, you know, it didn't do as well as the others, but it still did fine enough. Of like fifteen million, maybe like twenty eight million. It was brutally front loaded though. <laughs> like it, it bled off. It bled real quick, but still did all right. So these concert movies, they've they, like. They are proven to make money, especially like when the artists, you know, themselves are like their peak popularity. And that's when you do it. And, you know, Taylor Swift, like this is basically the peak of her popularity, pretty much. I mean, I don't think she's ever been like this popular ever. <laughs> and she's always been popular ever since like she started, really. Like she's been popular for like well over a decade. But now it's like the biggest this is like the biggest she's ever been <laughs> in terms of you know popularity so yeah so concert movies they can make money so i'm labeling that as a pro another pro are the reviews for this movie they are quite good to say the least um it's a hundred percent granted it's only 23 reviews so there's not a whole lot to go off of its audience score is 99%, and its cinema score is an A+. It's been a while since I've seen a grade that high. I think the last one was Sound, uh, Sound of Freedom, like, way back in July. And usually movies that hit, like, A-pluses, like, they really, they appeal very hard to the, the, the target demographic it's going for. And for this, it's obviously Taylor Swift's fan base, the Swifties. <laughs> obviously they were gonna love this movie to death and they did this appealed to them and they loved it which explains the a plus <laughs> so yeah you know reviews audience score critic score all not critic score cinema score all spectacular so easy pro right there um are there any other pros I can think of? I think I mentioned all the main things with this. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Um, there are no real cons. I, I guess there's some 
concerns. <laughs> Some minor concerns. I, you know, I should mention his Thursday previews because that's something that I feel like needs to be talked about. His Thursday previews, two point eight million. Now, for a movie that sold like a hundred million worth of pre-sale tickets, that number looks insanely low. But here's the thing: this movie wasn't meant to have Thursday previews for the longest time. People expected it to open. On the 13th at 6 p.m. That was the plan. But then on Wednesday, Taylor decided, you know, and her team decided, you know what? Let's add Thursday previews. Let's just put it out there a day in advance. Less than a day in advance, really. Just put it out there. And it threw a lot of people off guard in a bad way. <laughs> Some people were kind of pissed off about that. Because they're like, wait, we fought over, like, these Friday tickets, but now you're just, like, giving, like, you're just doing this now with Thursday previews? Like, what the heck? <laughs> so, yeah, people were all peeved about that. And I know movie theaters were uh, also peeved about that, the <laughs> short notice. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of, like, what happened with the, it was, like, the Sega Saturn, that that game console from Sega, and I like I looked into the history of that just out of curiosity. And the way that system that system launched was so weird because it was supposed to come out like September of ninety-five, but then because they didn't want to deal with PlayStation, they decided to swerve and shock everyone and be like, hey, you know, at E3 they were like, Hey, our console's out right now. And it caught everyone off guard in the worst way imaginable. Because no one was prepared. Stores were pissed. They had no games ready. It was a disaster. <laughs> um, and so that reminded me of like what happened with the Errors Tour. Like Thursday previews. But the thing is. like Most of the tickets that were sold for this. They were sold for like the weekend. So it's not like a huge deal. It's not like it's going to. These Thursday previews are going to kill its momentum. It might be like a bad headline but it'll be like the headline will go away pretty quickly so i've already seen the friday numbers i'm like yeah this movie's doing just fine it's more than fine really so yeah i just want to mention the thursday previews because i thought the whole situation was just odd odd kind of like a you know like a, maybe a, a minor mistake a minor um i might yeah just a minor little um thing that they they probably shouldn't have done but what's done is done and it's not gonna hurt this movie in the long run so it doesn't even matter that much but i just wanted to mention it but another thing is this movie's longevity because well, a movie like this with the fan base it has there's a very large chance this movie's going to be stupidly front-loaded i mean let's look at like going back to these concert movies I mean, Justin Bieber, that wasn't really front, super front-loaded. That had, like, pretty, like, whatever legs. The Hannah Montana, like, this was front-loaded. Mmm, look at those drops. 67%. 68%. It fell off hard after the first weekend. Obviously, it would because they were, like, proclaiming it, like, oh, a limited one-week engagement, and then they obviously expanded it, but at that point, all the demand was, like, was already used, <laughs> so, yeah, but One Direction, this is us. I mentioned how front-loaded this movie is, and I really want to show you in detail. Had an 8 million opening day, fell 54% day two, <laughs> and second weekend, it dropped 74%, which is, a uh, Hell of a drop off, and it never really recovered after that. So, yeah, I feel like the Eras Tour might have a sim, maybe a similar situation to this, maybe not. I don't know. Oh, I forgot to mention the Jonas Brothers one. That one didn't do that great. I mean, the Katy Perry one did like whatever, but this. Oof. Like, I imagine Disney expected a lot more from this, considering this was, like, a year after the Hannah Montana tour. And the thing is, the Jonas Brothers were, like, guests on that, and now this is, like, their own 3D 
concert movie that had an opening of 12 million fell 77 percent week two and it only made 19 million but brought in the most front letter runs i've ever seen for a wide release so yeah so this is obvious as you can probably tell this is an omen it just feels like an omen like it just feels like this is what could happen and it may just happen because obviously all the demand for this movie is going to be week one and then it's going to drop off severely likely after that so just the overall the front loadedness of this movie the potential front loadedness of it labeling that as a con and i think that's a uh, yeah, I think that's really it. So opening weekend, this movie's projected to make a hundred million. I see that happening. I've heard like early um numbers being like forty to fifty million for like Friday, and the totals raising like a hundred to one thirty. I don't know. Like this is a hard thing to predict, but I'm gonna say let's have a wide range. Just to be safe. 100 to 150. Let's go with that. It'll be somewhere in that range, I bet. I see this hitting triple digits. I see this having the best opening weekend in the history of October. I see it beating Joker for the record. So, I see that happening. So, 100 to 150 million opening weekend. It's total God. It could be anything at this point. I I don't know. <laughs> This is maybe the hardest thing I've ever predicted, honestly. Um, I'm just going to have the widest range imaginable. 200 to 400 million. Somewhere in that ballpark, this will land. So 200 to 400 million domestic total. And that's it. So, yeah, that's it for the weekend. It's only this movie, obviously. What... What movie would want to go up against this? Well, that would be a very stupid decision. So, yeah, I'm glad it's only like one movie I'm doing this weekend. Really happy about that because I'm really, really getting sick of making like three to four prediction videos every weekend. That's really irritating. Um, So next week, we have Killers of the Flower Moon. And then we have... um. Dick's the musical. That's gonna be real interesting to discuss. But I'm excited to talk about Killers of the Flower Moon because that movie has that movie's weird. It has a lot of positives, but a lot of negatives too. And none of those negatives have anything to do with the quality. It has more to do with the runtime, the budget, and Taylor Swift <laughs> dealing with all that. And the thing is, like, I didn't even mention that the Tales of Eras tour, that's almost three hours. But it's not hurting its business at all. So maybe Killers of the Flower Moon has a chance, despite being like an, a, a half an hour longer than the Eras tour. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. And I might as well mention the last week of October, too. A whole bunch of nothing movies, with the sole exception of Five Nights at Freddy's. And... Yeah, that's going to be in the next two weeks. So, yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, share the whole drill. We'll check out more prediction videos I made on the channel for this year, the past few years. Want to watch any of them, go right ahead. There's also the Cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I talked about this movie one time. And that was when it was announced. And that was episode 204. I talked about it uh, alongside Exorcist Believer because when the Tales of Eros tour was given that October 13th date, that was the day Exorcist Believer had. But then after thinking about it, they were like, oh, do we really want to go up head to head with Taylor? I don't think so. So they moved it up a week to avoid that, um, <laughs> that behemoth. So... Yeah, I talked about it then. And the thing is, people were kind of upset. People really wanted the two movies to go head to head. They had like the hashtag extra swift. They had it prepared and everything. But nope, it wasn't meant to be. So, 
Yeah. yeah. So you want to watch that episode or any other episodes I've done. I've done 210 episodes. So if you want to watch any of them from beginning to now, highly encourage you to do that. You want to binge them all from beginning to now, highly encourage you to do that. So go do it. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. I just did my September recap like yesterday, two days ago. I don't know. Very, very recently. All right. That's on the channel. And my October recap, that will come out about the first week of November before the, the Marvels comes out. Let's just say that. In October, it's going to... I'm, I'm, I just know I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to only be really talking about the Eras Tour and how much money that made. I just know it. So, yeah, look forward to that video. Stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos of Man the Channel, you can go right ahead. And, yeah, that's it. That's all. I'm out. Goodbye.